fantastic. Hopefully everyone's seeing the same thing. Alrighty. Um, so I am, as Nicholas was saying, uh, I am an Indigenous woman. I'm Plains Cree. I identify as non-binary and queer. So that's just a little bit about me as a person. Um, today we're going to be talking a lot about storytelling. And it's not traditional storytelling in the way of like protocols and all these things. We're really exploring everyday storytelling and what is all the little stories that make your business and your spaces unique. Uh, we're going to explore what is your own story. Everyone has a story and it's your job to share with the world. Uh, why should we share our story with our audience and how do we effectively share our story? The end of today's presentation will end with an activity and a little bit of sharing activity uh, just to see uh, what your story is and start sharing that out. So, uh, I will really do my introduction in my language. Dance, honey constant English, and cigars and fuck the house. You guys, which niya? Nindo te nahi hui when. My name is Honey Constant English. I'm from Sturgeon Lake. Um, I always try to do my introduction in Cree, just because again, it is supposed to be my first language. But French was actually my first language growing up because my family has had long relationships with Indian residential school systems here in Canada. So when I was growing up, they thought I would have an easier time if I spoke uh, French versus Cree. Um, but I was the only one in my family to do that. So quite interesting. Uh, I'm a full-time artist, so I do a lot of beadwork, uh, do some painting, and I do a lot of classes. And recently, finally, I uh, defended my master's thesis. My thesis was in archaeology. Uh, specifically working at Wanuskewin Heritage Park to create an interpretive program uh, focused on the archaeological history, but from the Indigenous perspective. And if you have no idea what Wanuskewin is, I'm actually here at the park right now. But Wanuskewin is a gathering place. It uh, has been a gathering place for the Northern Plains Indigenous people since time immemorial. And when we talk about this place, there's over 6,000 years of human history and stories that are held on within the earth and in the air. And when you're out here, you can really feel like it's the spirit of the valley. And so I essentially did my entire master's thesis looking at grade four and grade six curriculum and how do I bring to life the stories that are here related to our culture, related to our history and our peoples, and how do we make relationships with the people that are here now, and how do we move forward in good in a good way? So it's essentially what I did, uh, and along the way, I did not think I was going to become a storyteller, but uh, in a lot of ways, it's where I ended up. So that's a little bit of my background. I've worked at Wanuskewin as an interpreter from 2017 till about 2021. Then I took a step back to do art and uh, my own business full time. Super privileged to do that. So uh, I also run uh, my stories and my community through Instagram predominantly. That's where I just found my audience uh, and where I found my my voice really was most active. So the word there, ninihio eskoewiwen, is a Cree word, which means like I'm an indigenous woman. And it's not just saying that, but it's like the spirit of it. As an Indigenous woman, I have the privilege and the honor to be uh, gifted the name Esquo after fire, Esquetil. So a lot of the things, uh, and you're probably going to start noticing this, a lot of our stories comes from our own personal experiences and how we place ourselves in the world around us. So when we talk about even how do we share our um, stories with the people and why why should we tell our stories well if you go onto our my instagram um i really my husband calls it oversharing but i love to tell stories and tell people about my experiences because at the same time i acknowledge that my experience is not unique as much as i hate to say that uh as an end as a individual who has intergenerational residential school trauma I've never stepped foot in those places but those spaces really do impact me um and also as a queer person in Saskatchewan or as just a person trying to exist everyone has all of these little 
invisible strings, I like to call them, that connect us. And the more that we can identify those strings, the more that we build those connections, those strong emotional connections. Um, and then you start building community. Uh, the word in Cree is logotuin. So that's just something that I do at my on my socials and for my business. And I find that works really well for me. So when you look at my feed, uh, whether that is in person or on social media, you should get a sense of who I am. And again, our teachings heavily play a role in the way that I present myself in person or online, because we were told that we come from the stars, we live a physical life, and then we return to the stars. So how do I show people here and now what my star looks like? So a lot of the colors that I use are fire colors, because again, I'm very loud and rambunctious, and I like to be out and about um, but it also connects to, again, how I feel as just a person in general. I've really aligned myself with fire colors, and lately I've been finding myself more leaning towards pinks, so that's why my branding is kind of fire colors and pinks. Uh, you can't have a story, you can't have beadwork without the stories, so I include history and motivation for my work, and even with my business name, Honey Willow, uh, willow is a plant that my family has passed down the teachings of how to harvest and weave for a while. So it feels like that was a huge part of me and the way that I present myself. And always, 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 if you look on my website or on social media or in my stories, um, I always start with the same phrase, and saying Hitotamok. And it's a Cree phrase that means, hello, my friends. It's an invitation for you to be part of the uh, community, an invitation that you are equal here. And again, going back to our teachings, it's everyone is equal and everyone's part and everyone's voice matters, regardless if you are Indigenous or non-Indigenous. So that's the invitation to collaborate. And that's something that you can bring into your own home fires and your own circles as well. So we've already started uh, kind of diving into this. But what is storytelling? So storytelling is a way that we can kind of connect to the people. We want to activate our voices, our sounds. We want to activate imagination and get people excited. When we can pique their interest, that interest can grow into appreciation. That appreciation can grow into understanding. And then that understanding can grow into action so they can do something with that and a lot of the times especially related to worldview or um you know morals and all these things the more stories you tell the more you start to kind of formalize and establish who you are as a person what is your brand and who can really align with that as well the biggest thing is always coming down to interpretation. You know your story best, and you know your offerings the best, your product, and why people should care. We always talk about the why. Why are you doing this? Why should people care? Why should people come to you? And that's what we're gonna be exploring today. Uh, once you can really identify the why, the motivator, the thing that really makes you go and adds fuel to your fire then we can go and talk into the how if we just start started with the how right now and you had no why it would be kind of like pulling teeth you're going to really be wondering what's your next step but when you get the why you get so many more op options and ideas and content to put out there now the next thing that we're going to talk about is your story so again my story is your story so what is unique about your journey, your perspective or expertise? Again, you are the only person like you. You are the only one who can do what you do. And when it comes to collaborative projects, uh, a lot of the times people say like, oh, don't share your, your knowledge with other like-minded people or don't do this and don't do that. But at the end of the day, and this can again come from my experience just in the world, you are the only person who can do what you do. And the more uh, connections you make with other folks, whether they are business owners, tour operators, uh, storytellers, the more that you can uplift each other, it would only put more good medicine into the world. 
again, it always comes down to our intentions and why we're doing what we're doing. But a lot of these um, similar spaces only start solidifying our relationship to each other and relationships. Now, how do you get started in this field and how can others get involved? Whether you are a baker or a beater or you have like uh, rental spaces, your story also talks about, um, your story should in inv invite people to investigate your space, your surroundings. How did you even become a baker, a beater, a storyteller? And how can people get involved? Maybe people who are following your journey and listening to your stories are people that can eventually um, purchase or partake in any of your offerings. Maybe they're people who are just interested and want to learn, or maybe it's just people that want to uh, make connections and find, find something that they're not familiar with. So storytelling can be a lot of things. It's a lot easier to say what storytelling is not, which is just telling facts. Storytelling should invite people to feel things. Now, why should we start share stories? I've already started talking about this a little bit, but short story, to care. We want people to care about the things that we're doing. When people can care about our offerings, our products, then they're more likely to purchase or follow or be long-term supporters of our businesses. We want to inspire, to engage, and to connect with our audience. That's the whole goal. We want to make those emotional connections. And the thing about our human brains, if I were to talk to you for a full hour, you would probably only remember 10% of the information given to you, but people will always walk away finding a connection to something that they emotionally connected to, a memory, something that sparked something in them. So if you can make your story relevant and relatable and connect to their spirit or their emotions, going to be so much better. Something to keep in mind is, is there an interest, demand, or search for your specific uh, perspective or connections? Uh, people want your authentic connection. So uh, at the very beginning of my journey, I was really targeting and trying to talk about Indigenous heritage and beadwork and language. But my own personal journey is I started speaking Cree when I was like 16. I've always heard the language, but it was never spoken to me, again, because of residential schools. Uh, I only started beading when I was around 16. So when I went to these different spaces, I didn't feel uh, like my voice was really uh, necessary in those certain spaces. Instead, I started being authentic to myself and say, yes, I do have international residential school trauma. I don't know how to speak my language. I speak French first. I do this and I do that and I'm starting to learn. And I started to be authentic in the journey that I was taking. So my artistry really first started with just documenting how my my lines were getting cleaner and how my colors were getting more authentic to who I was and I wasn't trying to do all these crazy things to fit in with the like real deadly beaters man uh instead I found my own style and my own voice and I find it I found that I had a unique uh perspective of the world and the way that I approach life in general and from there my my community my uh started to grow and grow and it became easy to just be me. And I didn't have to worry about fitting a mold and keeping up with this mold. Instead, if you are authentic to who you are, there's gonna be people who resonate with that and can connect with you. Ultimately, we wanna make sure that we offer a social buy-in, uh, which is just a way to say that people want to feel part of the circle and that was the teaching that I always carry with myself. Um, the teaching of the circle is that everything and everyone is equal and invited and part and their voices are as equal to everyone else. So people who participate in my community are always welcome to share, to communicate, to learn, to share stories, to ask questions and that's something that I offer online and both in person and uh, the community, I feel like, is a lot stronger because of that. But what is their social buy-in? Can they feel seen and heard in your story? And however you want to implement that is totally up to you. Again, going back to the why of our product, story, and business, words have meaning. What we share into the world absolutely has 
um, a lot of depth that we don't really, really see. And what we are sharing out should be something that you are passionate about, should be something that is you and something that, uh, or something that you're exploring a little bit more deeply. Instead, uh, instead of just saying words and hoping, throwing things at the wall and hoping that they stick, think about what you are interested in. What's something that you want to learn about? Um, also, with the words have meaning, uh, we are now moving into more of a different social environment. We have seen a lot of uh, truth and reconciliation efforts being made. Uh, if you are Indigenous or non-Indigenous trying to explore maybe the historical connection of your spaces and your landscape connected to Indigenous heritage and you just are nervous of not not knowing where to start, my best advice to you would be to just start and ask questions. Understand protocol. Um, <clears throat> offer, offer those emotional, again, relationships and really starting from a place of learning. The moment that we start approaching these things with good intentions and good medicine, we have the ability to learn, relearn, unlearn, and then relearn again. That's the thing about uh, our connections to the landscape that we're in is everyone is learning and you shouldn't be afraid of making a mistake. It's ultimately how you respond to mistakes and address uh, things that you have maybe made a mistake in the past to how you move forward. That's what truth and reconciliation is. As an Indigenous person, I can also make mistakes and I also can cause harm. It's how you recover and how you show the world who you are. Now, Things that matter take time. It's not going to happen all in one go. And slow change is meaningful change. As much as myself would love to run really, really fast, uh, slow change is meaningful change. And we want that meaningful change. So how do we share? We want to identify what is our story, our product, our business, and then the why. So when we share, whether it be in person, online, we want to make sure that we're very concise. Uh, people really love to get like bite-sized information and the more concise you are with it, the more straightforward you are with it, really builds that strength of knowing your topic and knowing yourself. So uh, at the very beginning, I can tell you that I am an Indigenous artist and full-time heritage educator and I absolutely love to talk about stories and all the meaning and everything. That's essentially what I do. We want to identify our audience and meet them where they're at. So I've already kind of touched on this. Your audience, if you are actively participating in your business or offering right now, you should have a good sense of who generally comes to your space, who buys product, what are their lifestyles like? For me, again, I was really trying to target the Indigenous community, sell beadwork. But the thing that I needed to really adjust to was that, first of all, majority of Indigenous peoples uh, can bead. So we're very, uh, very much so like have this mentality of like, oh, I could beat that. I'll just do it at, late, at home later. So if I was really trying to aim at that community, uh, odds are that I would get a sale so I could pay my rent would be very, very low. Instead, as I was starting to explore my story and why people should listen to me and buy my beadwork, I discovered that I really aligned with teachers. So teachers are my like majority of my audience or moms. And it's because I offered a lot of learning opportunities with myself. Uh, a lot of the times when I post something, there's a Cree word and then the, the teaching of it or the definition of it below. So it was a way for me to teach myself these Cree words and to connect, but other people were using it as a learning opportunity as well. So my offerings, instead of just being strictly beadwork, uh, which at the beginning was a huge part of my product, uh, my product nowadays is mostly educational pieces. So I make uh, these beautiful, beautiful stickers. So they have Cree phrases and they just modernized. Uh, so like you're too deadly in the, the little conversational hearts. But I also offer free coloring pages as downloads on my website with like a Cree phrase or something that's related to what's happening in the environment at the time. And a lot of teachers use it uh, in their classrooms. So 
just supplementing pieces like that. So knowing your audience is a huge, huge piece. And if you ask them and you have those lines of communication open, you can really talk about what they want and what you can offer and adjust and adapt to them. So uh, something to keep in mind is, is your audience only on social media? Who? Or is, are they in person? Do they want an experience or do they want a product or do they want a product with an experience? So that's something you should always think about. Um, collaborations is something I've also mentioned. There's no one else like you. And when you can collaborate with other creators, other artists, other store um, business owners, you have two beautiful foundations uh, that can come together and cross uh relate to you shouldn't have to worry about uh english is not my first language uh you shouldn't have to worry about competition again when you put competition out of your mind and just think about it as relationships and collaborations and there's no one else like you your resources open up to you and as a small business owner myself that is so hugely important to have more resources Again, how do you share? You should always evaluate how you're sharing. Is it being useful? Is there something you can do better? Are people enjoying it? You should reimagine. Maybe there's something else that I can do. Is there a way to activate spaces? Are there additional touch points that I could bring more stories to? And then reevaluate. So is this successful? Is it working? Are people enjoying it? So that's something to always keep in mind. Now, this is an example that I love to share. Uh, so I recently posted this uh, reel to my stories. Uh, this reel is about two minutes and 30 seconds long. Uh, people are like, no, your reel shouldn't be too long. But this is the one that I got the most engagement for. Uh, and it just shows you that everything is content. Everything and anything you can turn into a story. Because how you approach your daily life, whether that is, again, an insider peek to your business, uh, an opportunity to educate related to your field, your offerings, um, the things that you do, whether it's your process process shots. Uh, so watching or seeing how you create your product or how you develop your product or how you set up for your product or an event organization. Uh, this is where you can really start to tell the story of your organization. Who are you? And what are your offerings? How did you become this person? How did you come to this field? Did you always find your spirit calling you to this location? Um, what is the story of your materials? So for me, glass beads, what is the history of glass beads? What did we use before glass beads? Uh, and why is it important to you? When you can really make that emotional connection of why it's important and why people should care, you're already running. You're, you're running. You got this. So. This will be the video I'll play um, and I will turn off my camera just so you can watch. Uh, but you can kind of kind of see uh, it's clips from like the past six months ish, especially in the last like leg of my masters. Uh, I really took people on a journey with me. I invited them to walk this journey with me. And I found, especially when I was sharing it to my stories or to social media or little snippets, um, I didn't realize how many people were walking this journey with me until I posted it. And I was just overwhelmed with the insane amount of people that it touched along the way. Uh, and that's why we tell our stories, those emotional connections. I no longer was celebrating by myself. I had a bunch of people to celebrate with me. And that was the beauty of community. So I will play this video. Uh, hopefully it will work. Let me know if it doesn't have sound. We shall see. Oh, as it disappears. Honey, there's no sound coming.
Okay, hold on, hold on. Um, I feel like a cook. -a I'm a grandmother. Okay, hold on. Oh, uh, let's see. Maybe if I turn that on. So someone in the chat says, stop screen share, start it again. Make sure you check the little box at the bottom to share sound. Oh, okay, okay. We got this. Dinagi, thank you. Interpretive design for one of the okay. heritage okay, that works. from the indigenous perspectives as some of the historical. Sorry, I'm just closing the chat. Stories of indigenous archaeology. My research question was how can archaeology with indigenous ways of knowing contribute to reconciliation? To be honest, I do not know how to just be an archaeologist because I was born into this world as an indigenous woman who has experienced this field and two I'd see it. Archaeology is more than just things, it is people and stories. And much like our surviving and resilient culture and language, archaeology is not limited to the past. Archaeology is a valuable tool in recovering, reclaiming, and revitalizing our indigenous communities, heritage, and connection to the land that surrounds us. Good child learning is the shared responsibility within our community according to the natural law teaching of Wakatawa. We are taught that children are a gift, and their presence is a reminder that our stories, culture, and... The third programming part... Wow. The third programming point, Archaeology of a Site, is located at Juniper Flats Campsite. Um, located... Archaeologists are storytellers, are protectors of knowledge, and need to be active members in our local community, especially regarding truth and reconciliation efforts. Through the lens of the one Escaven story, as explored through my perspective as an Indigenous queer child uh, with intergenerational residential school trauma, from the prayers laid by the original Elders Council to my first great experience where I found pride in my brown skin and dark eyes. To the vice of discovering the petroglyphs at New West and Bryson Dome to 2025 UNESCO World Heritage Site designation. It is the spirit of the valley, the extensive archaeological record, the community that built Monastirin, and the words of Lake Lawrence Tobacco that prove how archaeology with indigenous ways of knowing can contribute to truth and reconciliation. No photos. <laughs> Archaeology, especially when paired with indigenous ways of knowing, serves as an honorary witness to Northern Plains and Jewish people's connection lab since time and memorial. In the words of Lake Warren's tobacco, it was always meant to be. Alrighty, so that's oh crazy. Uh that's a little bit of what I share on my social media. Whatever you feel comfortable doing obviously is going to be fine. Uh however you choose to start sharing that story is totally up to you. Um and that's what this activity is really going to start uh helping you create and find. Uh for me, I find that I'm very comfortable being on camera, as I'm sure you can see. I love to show the dualities of being like a very polished um, person versus a very unpolished person. And that's just my experience and my reality. I'm someone who is, again, I just finished my master's and got an archaeology degree. I got my bachelor of science in archaeology with a minor in biology and sociology and all these things. I have these beautiful things on paper, but I also have the duality of not feeling like I'm very much there. I still feel like I am uh, like 17 trying to figure out who I am and how I fit into the world. And I can be both and be totally accepting and loving of that. And I find when I share my story, I can share the good and the bad, um, the polished, the unpolished, uh, show you how I look when I've pulled an all nighter and I'm surviving off of like energy drinks, Advil and like chocolate and still show you the beautiful things that I can create because those are my stories and that's who I am and that's authentic to me. 
So what you will do is think about what is your story, what's authentic to you. If you want to tell your stories and never show your face, that's okay. Whatever you are comfortable with, again, going back to that, your comfortability is the most important part of this. You have to make sure that it's realistic to you. It's something that you can do over and over and over again. It's reflective of who you are as a person and relevant to you as a person and the way that you live your life. And you want to make sure that it is um, authentic. Again, always going back to who you are and how you interact with the world around you. For me, uh, again, my colors are very bright colors. I use a lot of like reds and fire colors and beautiful, like crazy colors. Um, and it goes it also goes back to like my name, Pagachashimas, the name that was gifted to me when I was very young. And that translates to wild pony. So you can kind of get a sense of who I am when I get excited. Um, so that's me as a person. If I were to try to really fit this like, like really clean girl beige aesthetic that is very beautiful for, cert for certain people, it would be hard for me to create stuff because I don't feel passionate about that. I don't feel excited about that. But creating with color and telling the stories of why I chose this color or why little meanings behind everything makes me feel passionate. And I'm more inclined to create and recreate and create some more using that style. So for this activity, I'm going to give you about five, 10 minutes. Um, probably let's go through five minutes to kind of go through that little sheet that you should have got emailed. And if you don't just pull out a piece of paper or kind of uh, dream I was going to say explore uh but using what you've learned and again this is a very superficial bite-sized information session for you you are going to take what you've learned draft it into initial like two minute 30 second bite-sized story to hook us in as an audience uh, if you want to like do a shout out to your social media that's great too but this is kind of like an elevator pitch but for a story to begin identifying your storytelling methods and your story in general. Uh, it says two to five minutes. We're gonna literally make it uh, like a minute, 30 seconds, or if you just wanna draft up something to put in the chat, that's okay. Again, we wanna make sure it's concise and meaningful. Things that are meaningful can always connect us to the emotional pieces. And again, always remembering people only really take away 10% of what they've learned, but unless it's an emotional connection that makes them that touches their spirit, they're gonna remember that since time for, for forever. Um, so some questions that can really help you during this or this activity is who are you? So what are your what are your connections? What is your heritage? Have you lived in this space forever? Where have you been that have led you to this journey? Uh, all these things. What should why should people listen? Uh, do you have any expertise in the area? Is there a unique perspective that you're offering? Um, is there an experience that people can, again, tag along? We want to do that authentic connection, that social buy-in. And then how can I participate in this story? How can people uh, feel like they're part and listen to the journey? So I'm going to turn my, my, my sound off. I'm going to give us five minutes to do this. Um, together and if you have any questions as we're going go ahead and throw them in the chat I think and when, when the five minutes is up I will either ask people to share if they feel comfortable or you can just throw it in the chat uh but yeah I'm gonna be quiet now and I'll let you work Egose.
Alrighty, you have about a minute or two left. Does anyone want to share verbally or you can always throw it in the chat? I think for this last minute, I will go ahead and give you an example of what I, um, an example or suggestion. Uh, I will reuse my story to kind of help you get a, a sense of what I would like or would like to see. Again, if it doesn't fit it, no big, no big deal. Um, can't say, Honey Constant English, Nitsigasan. Hello, my name is Honey Constant English. I'm from Sturgeon Lake. I'm a full time artist and heritage educator, and I explore beadwork and color. Uh, through the lens of my Indigenous heritage as a way of inviting people in to learn about truth reconciliation. So a little bit about myself. So again, who are you? Why should people listen to you? What do you offer and how can people participate? Is generally the goal. We want people to get hooked. So uh, is there anyone who would like to verbally share? Go ahead and throw it in the chat and then I can allow people to talk, I believe. And if you don't want to, that's totally okay. If you want to just throw it in the chat as well. Alrighty, that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna keep moving just for the sake of time. But uh, if you do wanna share, go ahead and throw it in the chat. I'm gonna jump to our next phase so that way we can get to questions. Uh, so the next page is literally the last page where we can get to our questions. If you'd like to stay connected with me personally, those are my socials again. Um, but if you want to really explore this topic, um, more in depth. We are actually doing uh, an online course uh, every Wednesday and Thursday starting from November 1st to November 23rd. Uh, it's from 6 to 9 p.m. and it will be over Zoom again. Uh, but if you do want to participate, I believe you can go back to the same place that you uh, registered for this or just connect with Nicholas as well. But uh, does anyone have any questions whatsoever? I kind of give you a lot of information all in one go. Awesome, thanks. I'm so glad. I hope this was uh, helpful for everyone to, to kind of get started with finding your story and sharing that story out. Beautiful. Okay. Well, if there are no questions, I'm, I'm going to stay on until 11 or 12 o'clock. Beautiful. Oh, Jackie's here. <laughs> yes. Okay. Awesome. I'm I'm happy. Perfect. Yay. Thank you so much, honey. Um, I even started to just you know tell myself my own story and and what that looks like. And so, 
um, I, I, I've taken away some some key points from this. So um, again, I just want to thank everyone for for joining us today. Um, and I think something that hits home for myself is just that emotional connection piece that you talk about um, and those invisible strings. And when we can make those emotional connections with people, they want to hear more. They want to know what you're all about, what your product is all about. So again, if you're, uh, you know, a, a somewhere in the industry where you're offering a product, you know, hook someone in with, you know, how that changes their life, how it connects to them and why they need to have that product. Um, I always think beadwork um, is just amazing and beautiful in the time that it takes someone to do it. Um, so it's just like, I want to learn more. How does this happen? How do you create this? Where does those inspirations come from? Um, just what does that all look like? So again, introducing that connection there. So um, I'm just gonna flip this over uh, and, and finish with this. So uh, thank you everyone uh, for joining us today um, and, and being a part of our webinar series. We are you know, very happy uh, to have hosted Honey today and hear her story um, with the positive impacts of storytelling. And I'd like to uh, encourage all of you that if you haven't signed up for the, the workshop she was talking about, we still have some space. Um, so you can find, uh, find out more information and what that looks like to help tell your story. If you do have any questions, um, our contact is up on the screen here. So training at tourism sask com um, and ask any sort of questions that you do have we can link you back to our business hub where all of our offerings are located uh, just a quick uh, business.tourismsas.com uh, scroll down and you'll see all of our training that we do have offered the nice thing right now is all of the training that we do have coming up from now until December is complimentary so there is no cost so uh, tell anyone that you know that might be interested in the tourism training uh, there's lots of good content and uh, you know, stay tuned. We do have more coming up. I just got word today that we're posting another one for November on conflict and de-escalation. So uh, really great training that I think is everywhere within our lives, whether it be uh, in the workplace or in our personal lives. And sometimes uh, with a coworker, or sometimes with our spouse, our kids, uh, sometimes with our dog uh, or cat or whatever that you have. So uh, some really good uh, training coming up here. So um, thank you everyone again. You may receive a short uh, survey after we close out the webinar. This helps us understand what was really good with our training, what you guys want to see more of. Um, so I do encourage you, please, please, please do take the time to fill out those uh, that survey. It is only nine questions. It's very short and simple um, and helps us greatly back here at Tourism Saskatchewan. So uh, thank you so much everyone for uh, attending today. Uh, have a wonderful day and hopefully we'll see you in our next webinar.